Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this this show by E by Oregon Voters Digest by Georgia. We're going to be a, we've got a very very busy schedule aspect of it. As you know, the, I've got my my gear on and and you know veterans are, are sitting there figuring out how are they going to fare out in the, in all of the upcoming elections and et cetera. And so bottom line is that I've been reaching out, been really reaching out to try to find someone that we can maybe can talk to to these issues across the board about our issues from a national perspective, a statewide pr perspective, and the living room, which is here in the Portland metropolitan area. We've got many issues and whatever. And so consequently, it's a very, it's a major concern, if you will, to, to our veterans here living in the state of Oregon. And uh, by George, you know, they, they are voters also too, by the way. And, uh, and they, they're, they're very interested in the beauty of the city, the Portland area, and the like. And so there's a lot of things. As you can see, I'm, I'm running all over the place because in all due respect, we're all confused. <laughs> <laughs> we're just trying to get this thing together. So at the, I happened to found someone to have found someone that I, I feel that could really, really support us from the standpoint of getting the kinds of information that we are in dire need of so we can be able to vote responsible. Because in this particular, at this particular time, we're looking for the kinds of leadership that can bring this city of roses back together again, the state of Oregon back together again, and in some cases the uh, the national scene, if you will. I'm sure we got a we got a presidential race aspect that we don't. We, that's that's just as confused. But the whole idea we're going to focus, if you will, on our state, and that's where we are. And so I I, I just reached out, and you might have seen this young man uh, before in the last couple of shows or whatever, John Turan, and I just happened to have known his dad back in those days. And, uh, and, you know, he was quite a guy. And so here's his, here's his son here today, who's very, very, very active, if you will, uh, here within our area, around the state for that matter. In fact, you might know his mom, Kay Turan. And Kay is uh, very, very, very active in herself with Volunteers of America. And, uh, and so consequently, we've got someone that's got some good background here with John, and, and uh, he's going to be taking the lead. Uh, throughout the throughout the, the you know you'll be seeing him pretty regularly because we're going to talk about a number of issues, and, uh, and and as you know, I'm looking for the kind of leadership that could could maybe sit in my seat for at some point in time in the very near future aspect of it. But John is available right now. Uh, he's also interested in politics. Uh, he's 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 not he's not. Uh, He's not pretty well uh, identified himself as any particular candidate at this point in time, and but I, I'm 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 trying to encourage him because he's got he's got so much sense of of, of background and wisdom and whatever. Uh, we, we're gonna we, he's gonna help us carry this through. So I'm really I'm really excited about having John here with us during these particular time. Welcome, John. Thank you, Bruce. You're looking well. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you for the warm open and uh, happy holidays to you and your family. I appreciate it. And by the way, yes. By the way, and, and to the to the to the listening and to the viewing audience. Happy holidays to you. Yes. Enjoy yourselves. It's very, very important. But again, be safe like, out there. And that's right. In fact, this is what's under the tree from out from the Oregon Voters Digest. <laughs> <laughs> John is there, so we, we we opened up the present. There was John. So, uh, in all due respect, uh, we're going to really we, we're really going to try to do everything we can to educate you about the issues and the time the issues that are now sitting at the table. That that uh, that we need to understand and we need to discuss. So I'm really excited about the fact of having John again. I can't say it over and over and over again. Again, thank you, thank you very very much, John. Well, thank you, you for know. having me. And okay. uh, you know, the special uh, the special part about this time of the year is yes. actually for. Uh, us people inter interested in politics yes. is all the speculation. Yes, yes. You know, yes. there's all this behind yes. the scene oh. maneuvering where yes. people are putting up their weather balloons yes, to te exactly. test yeah. out, yes. you know, whether yes. they'll work yes. for this particular race. And e so, exactly. Um, oh. it, 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 this is actually probably the my favorite part of the election oh. Oh, cycle. Is like all the uh, speculation and all the things that flow from oh, that. Oh, and you're going to see some newness, if you will, of some, of some things that are on the table mm -hmm. that we've never seen before. Yep. Like no open primary in the city council. Right. That's We're interesting. Moving thing. into the ranked choice we'll voting, about, yeah. uh, the small voter, oh, uh, the small donor program. Um, all these things have a potential to have a huge impact on yeah. the type of people that we yeah. elect going forward. Yeah. Yeah. But I would like to start off... Um, you know, and this is kind of the big domino to fall. Is, oh, no. yes. um, 
Earl Blumenauer. Okay. I'd, 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 I'd love to spend the first couple minutes of the show uh, recognizing the amazing career okay. um, that he's been able to put together over the last uh, pretty much 40 years in, 40 years in office. Okay. Um, he just announced his retirement. Yes. Um, Earl Blumenauer is our congressional representative uh, from Oregon District uh, 3, uh, which is basically the east side of Portland. Okay. Uh, he took over that seat from Ron Wyden mm -hmm. uh, right before uh, uh, Wyden moved over to the Senate. Mm -hmm. um, but Earl, Earl got his, how, uh, his start, uh, well, really interesting career. Let me, let me pull up a little quick sure, little sure, note no on problem, him. No problem, no problem, no problem. He's kind of like our national scene aspect of it. You know, he's sitting up in Congress, too, see? Right. And he's, he's kind of put some things on the table that... Uh, from a national perspective, you know, like the drug situation with the, mm -hmm. the weed thing, whatever. So yeah. So, so now what was that about Earl? Now what else? So you, you know, so you know, Earl is uh, is is a Portland native. Um, he he went to uh, Centennial High School. Uh, one of the rumors I heard is he was offered a, a volleyball scholarship uh, to UCLA. Really? But yeah. Yeah. Do you yeah. that? Volleyball? Yeah. Volleyball. Uh, <laughs> so he jumped off the volleyball <laughs> court and he jumped on a bicycle. Right. Well, um, <laughs> so yeah. So he ended up, uh, he ended up uh, enrolling into Lewis and Clark. Yeah. And, okay. that, and that's where he ultimately ended up getting awesome. his uh, law degree mm -hmm. uh, while he was doing... Um, Organizing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he was on the Voters Digest when he ran the city ran for city council. Oh, okay, oh, yeah, and he, excellent. Yeah, back you got that great days. history. Yeah, you got that history. Oh yeah, oh very much so. Yeah, good. Um, but yeah, so so Earl's Earl's first like organized effort was the Go Nineteen campaign. Mm -hmm. It was an effort to lower the voting age. While while it was unsuccessful here in Oregon, mm -hmm. it started a national trend, mm -hmm. and 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 this uh, probably represented one of the first things where Portland was the test market mm -hmm. for things to go national mm -hmm. and um that's that's probably one of the things that i would say is um probably the proudest thing of you know from my perspective on earl's career is how many things that he's tried here in portland mm -hmm. and we've seen them mm -hmm. implemented mm -hmm. uh nationally um Earl's been very big about public transportation, mm -hmm. and you've seen how cities have developed over mm -hmm. the last uh, 40 years with um, dedicated bike lanes, mm -hmm. uh, dedicated bus lanes, um, increased investment in transportation, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. Well, he carried the ball, if you will, for our living room city. Yeah. The Portland Metropolitan Area. Right. You know, it's the largest city in the state of Oregon. Got me? And there was a major focus here. He was, his phone is ringing all over the place. Sorry about that. Keep going. And um, sorry about that. That's sorry okay. About that, bro. Community television. But uh, in so in 1972, Earl was uh, elected to the uh, Oregon House of Representatives. He mm -hmm. represented the 11th district in Multnomah County. Uh, he was elect re-elected two more times into that, um, and then he also served on the board of Portland Community College. Um, after his time in the Oregon legislature, uh, he served on the Multnomah County Commission yep, sure did. from 1979 to 1986. Wow. Um, and then at that time, he decided to run for Portland City Council, mm -hmm. where he actually lost to Margaret Strachan. And uh, so he left uh, the county commission finally in 1986, and he ran for city council again. Uh, this time he got elected in May 1986. Um, he was uh, named uh, Commissioner of Public Works as his first bureau assignment. Uh, this was ultimately became the Bureau of Transportation. Mm -hmm. uh, during his time, he, he got various appointments from um, uh, Neil Goldschmidt. And in 1992, he decided to run for mayor. Um, that's a race I know you've always liked yeah, to look yeah, at. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's a, yeah, citywide and everything like that. He was running against a very formidable opponent in uh, Vera Katz. Vera Katz, yep, yes. Vera, yep, yep, Vera, the great grandmother yep, of Portland. Oh, very much. And the living room. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and so uh, after that election, uh, he ended up uh, resigning from city council in May 1996, and um, then he went to run for okay. the, the, the Congress seat. seat that was vacated by um, Ron Wyden. Mm -hmm. um, 
some of the big political positions that Earl has made, like in 1996, he voted for the Defense of Marriage Act, which passed that year. Uh, that that law was found unconstitutional in, 19, in 2013 and repli um, repealed. But since then, he has always supported L L LGBTQ yeah. rights. Mm -hmm. um, Blumenauer has also supported alternative energy sources, healthcare reform, and continued federal support for education. Um, he is also known as mo one of the most fervent advocates for the legalization of marijuana. marijuana. Oh, I remember that day. Co-founding the Congressional <laughs> uh, Cannabis Caucus. Right. Uh, he was chief sponsor of a bill to expand research on medical cannabis mm -hmm. and its drug derivatives, um, mm -hmm. which passed the House in uh, mm -hmm. July uh, mm -hmm. 2022. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I noticed too on that particular issue aspect that there, there was one other aspect that, that he was trying to do and that it, he, he wanted to make sure that there was a kind of a safe environment if you will for those facilities that were providing the cannabis aspect of it to put the monies in the bank as opposed to them just carrying it because it, because that was a problem from the standpoint of creating criminal issues. Yeah, you know, and I, I, I do think that, like still hasn't still hasn't passed. Well, I mean, you know, still so I, I I draw the parallel to uh, can we imagine what it would be like? I'm, I I think having consumption space uh, if you're going to legalize marijuana, right? Consumption space is kind of like necessary. Mm -hmm. um, and my my reasoning for that is is I draw a parallel to uh, alcohol. Mm -hmm. Can we imagine? how bad the world would be if there was no consumption space for alcohol, mm -hmm. you know, spe you know, specifically like right, bars, right, right. Um, you know, like bartenders uh, help cut people off, help people keep safe. And then also it creates an environment where everybody there is just, you know, drinking mm -hmm. and it doesn't carry over into the public. Well, that's it. That's the other right. And the smoke, right. And the secondhand smoke aspect, of it, which is still is, is an issue right now. Got my so, so one of the things that happened, you know, I was here when um, cannabis was legalized, I believe it was 2015 or 2016. Yeah. Um, but when that happened, basically every large property manager in the city banned the smoking of cannabis inside the house, mm -hmm. inside their apartment. Mm -hmm. So what that forced people to do um, to consume their uh, cannabis is to go outside. Mm -hmm. well, on, they, well, on, they already had a, a, an example, John, because cigarette smoking, remember? Mm -hmm. they, they, they basically confined it to a certain degree. Right. I mean, they had places where you could actually go. I can remember Lars Larson, you know, those big cigars that he normally carries, if you will. <laughs> but my point is that uh, folks were smoking in a confined area aspect of it. And I thought at that point in time when they did the cannabis deal that they would figure this out at that point in time. Yeah, I, I, that, that, that was kind of the, part of the package. That should have been part of the package. And, and, and so part of it, so it so, it, so so what happened was, you know, people were going outside of their large apartments, um, smoking weed outside, and then you would have those public uh, collisions. Where right. It could have been just a parent walking right, their right, child right, down the right, street right, and somebody's, right, right. you know, smoking weed outside, and that causes conflict. Yeah, very much so. Very and and so... I do believe some of the impetus b behind Measure 110 was to kind of get rid of that stigma of, you know, public drug use, you know. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a lot of people that supported Measure 110 were thinking, hey, I, I just live in an apartment and uh, if I want to smoke pot outside. And that's a problem. Right. It's and then, and, and, you know, so if we just get rid of that rule, but then we decided to legalize everything. And... Um, and and we got a problem today. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> you know yeah, absolutely. So so hopefully Earl will be, maybe get back into the campaign aspect of it. You know what I mean? In fact, I, I, maybe he might want to run for city council or something. That that would be interesting. Be kind of an easy job. <laughs> you got three people, but you know, if we got four districts, right? We got three city commissioners per district. Right? Yeah, got me. Yeah. And you know that'd be kind of a nice easy job for Earl with all of his background or whatever. He could bring some wisdom. He he could. I but he's a he's a hard worker, and I think he knows how to work one yes. speed. Yeah. So I, I mean, at this point, um, I know that uh, what I what I read in I believe it was the L.A. Times is uh, the amount of acrimony and ideological divide mm -hmm. um, was causing you know made Congress different than when he started right. um, back in the exactly. '90s, and so that's what led to his decision to retire. Well, like I say, I think I think you never know. You never he, know. He might, he might run for mayor. You never can tell. I mean, still looking for. 
so for, for folks to, to come to the table. All right, well, let's just let's let's let's, let's, let's <laughs> jump into the speculation I, 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 part. Yeah, I mean, it's I, uh, I, I put it that way. I'm gonna throw it out to you. There's a early, he, 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 the guy is, you know, he's a sports person type of deal. He he's very active. You know, he's physically, he, 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 as far as I'm concerned, he has no problem, if you will. But it'll be a perfect spot for him. And and the definition of the mayor of the city of Portland is such that uh, it's not going to be such a, a burdensome kind of a job aspect of it. He's basically a supervisor, so to speak. Checking or with the city administrator. Check, check, checking with the city administrator. And also uh, maybe be a part of, if you will, of, of uh, getting the kinds of individuals that are going to be uh, in these various districts. Three commissioners per district. Think about that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you know, that's another issue from the standpoint of how do you get good, credible resumes, if you will, yeah. to be a part of this process. It's going to be confusing on the beginning with And Earl has a lot of background. Mm -hmm. It'd be a, it wouldn't be, would be that much of a transition for him, if you will. People w would recognize him. And I think we could really get down to business yes. of putting things together. Because right now, it's just it's the newest kind of a situation. Mm -hmm. See, because I noticed that two of the city council people are running. Uh, yeah, we do <laughs> We do have, we, we like, since the last time we met, we had a, a second uh, yeah. sitting city councilor, yeah, Renee, Gonzalez. Claire, Renee Gonzalez. Um, yeah, he, he hadn't been in the seat for one year. That's he just, true. He got elected. That's true. Gym, gym. Um, and I, I think what he... Uh, you know, in my outside perspective, is yeah. he represents um, a, a more moderate uh, politician yeah. um, that than we've traditionally elected. Um, I think uh, between what was it between Mingus and Mingus, the other candidate yeah. for mayor, um, they both knocked off the most uh, left uh city council members and mm -hmm. uh, chloe mm -hmm. and uh hardesty right 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 so i think that might uh say something about where the electorate mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. you know well, right well, now well, we remember that renee is more business oriented yeah and being a, a lawyer an attorney got my point and, he, and very aggressive, it's almost like a prosecuting attorney. I mean, he, this kid, this kid is he, he, he's 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 very. I I went in front of council with him, and uh, I pointed out some questions about the city city administrator, right. and he, he right was on. right yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, he's, and so I I, I mean I think there's a, I think there's an interesting dichotomy. Um, I I do I do think both Mingus and um, Renee represent uh, moder uh, moderate uh, positions. But I think they come at it from a, a different uh, mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. um, Renee comes from private sector. Yeah. Um, he, he had a law firm. Um, he had to go out there and yeah, the man was a businessman. He was yeah, he's got to go out there, build yeah. business, yeah, 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 go yeah, talk yeah. to customers. He's, he's got quite and, a background. And um, you know, customer service really matters. Yeah, with, yeah. especially like yeah. when you're a small yeah. business. Yeah. Yeah. Like like like. You, you know, you have yeah. to look your customers yeah. in the yeah. eye. Yeah. 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 Um, and so that that. You know, me being a small business owner, I always look at government and say, "Boy, I wish it could run a little bit mm -hmm, more like, mm -hmm. um, like business." Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And sometimes that's good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then with uh, Mingus, you have somebody that comes uh, from with an institutional knowledge of, you know, the bureaucracy. Well, that's kind of newish. I mean, we, but, but our he, needs is a different ball game. But he, he's been working time. within, yeah, you know, the city yeah. structure. OJT type. Yeah. <laughs> on the job training. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm not looking for no on the job training right now. We need solid kind of an individual. And, I, and, I, and I'll be right up front with you. Mingus has a presence, and he's, he's not been there a year. And he has more of a presence than anybody there. Mm -hmm. He has a resume. He has good, good yeah. I mean, even beyond the mayor. You know, mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm, I'm really excited about the fact that he's running for mayor. Because we we have a need, if you will, for that kind of a resume. Yeah. Now whoever else come into the in the for that person. Now if Earl got in, it would be different a different ball game. See. Yeah. But my point is that he's very familiar with the terrain. Mm -hmm. You got me. Mm -hmm. And and we and there's some other national issue concerns that we're interested in. You know what I mean here locally. Mm -hmm. And then that's because of the whole issue of the the the, 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 the marijuana piece that he got involved in. There's some things that he, I'm sure that he would like to to add to. Some of the things, like the the, the idea of this, the, the the criminal action aspect of it, people break the monies into a bank or some sort like that. Yeah. And uh, and as we say, and, and kind of taking this, taking the, the the drugs, if you will, off the streets, if you will, cause, because uh, fentanyl and marijuana are two different worlds. Entirely different worlds. But the bottom line is that, that right now the public, though, is saying get rid of all of it. 
they want to reappeal the exam the whole deal. So it would be a, it would be neat to have a guy like that at the table, mm -hmm. like Earl, that he would define more specific why he supported, if you will, the marijuana law piece. Yes. And then and and, and then you know, and jump in continuing sort of the speculation yeah, 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 theme yeah, yeah. on okay. people that I've heard that yes. have been considering, you mm -hmm. know, putting up the weather balloons on yeah, whether they right, want to yeah. run for mayor. Um, Nick Blosser's name has come out. Okay. Uh, and that, where was he from? Where, where? Uh, Nick Blosser is Deborah Kafori's uh, husband. Oh, Nick. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he, he was he was in he was in Congress. He was back. He, was, he's, he, he did spend some time with Biden out in uh, D.C. He helped yeah, with his vote, yeah, vote yeah. by mail efforts in 2020. Yeah. Um, his, fa you know, he's native Oregonian. Mm -hmm. His family is, uh, owns uh, Sokol Blosser okay. um, Winery. Mm -hmm. um, I think he was chief of staff to Kate Brown also. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, uh, you know, from my outside perspective, I've never talked so to him he's before. Thinking about running. But I think, you know, he's had... He's been involved in campaigns. Okay, good. good. Uh, he just actually resigned from uh, PG. He was oh, yeah. uh, okay. he was an executive over there. He's resigning. I guess it takes effect at the end of this mm. month. Um, the strengths that I see from the outside, um, he has a lot of experience with the mechanics mm. Mm. of mm. running a campaign, mm. from you know mm. putting together mm. things like this mm. to figuring out which voters mm. are going to get contact. Mm. How do you raise mm -hmm. money and so all that stuff? He's coming back home. He, he's going to be part of the whole deal. He's so maybe maybe Deborah might uh, might come back to the table. Again. I, I, she's she's come out and from what I've read in uh, paper, she's come out and said no. Um, I, I think the one challenge, and again, I've never met Nick before, but yeah, you know, there's good. a retail aspect to politics okay, where yeah, you have okay, to go good. out and connect with people. Oh, good, good. And so, have to invite him on. Maybe get him on. Would love to. Would love to. Love to get all the candidates. It sounds on, great. On, this going to be. Oh, this going to be great. So I'm liking it now. I'm liking it. Yeah. Thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to you, John. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. And then so um, so measure measure one ten has actually been in uh, the news quite a week. Uh, uh, been in the news quite a bit this week. Right. It has. Um, it started this week. I was invited to a roundtable by uh, Jesse Cornett, mm -hmm. um, who is a candidate for District Three, okay. um, which is Southeast Portland. Mm -hmm. um, we we colloquially call it uh, the Kremlin. Okay. Um, and there he put uh, it was i was actually really uh impressed uh yeah. by the group that he put together um i know that he's involved in some executive capacity at oregon recovers okay. um i was expecting the crowd to be just all pro mm -hmm. uh measure 110 but actually he had a really good sampling of different perspectives mm -hmm. And uh, it was a really fulfilling conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and it was on a smaller scale. It had mm -hmm. about uh, 15 people. Uh, we had it over at Kiln, which is over on uh, a, a great, it looks like a uh, co-working space okay. over on 12th okay. and Hawthorne okay. in okay. Southeast. Um, and then yesterday, well, before you leave that point, did, was there anything, what, what came out of that particular session? Was there anything in regards to did they, did they come up with something more specific? Uh, I, 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 what, my take on it, you know, was like the general sentiment is that there's going to be some changes uh, okay. coming coming down from Measure 110. Um, uh, I, I, I think most people hope the legislature will handle that problem, um, but there are people out there preparing to run a ballot measure if the legislature is not, mm -hmm. not able to change it. Um, my, my main point, is that you know, you know that I brought up in it is the fentanyl cri crisis is a national issue, and we're looking at like local solutions for it, mm -hmm. and I don't know. Um, I I just feel that some component of it of our drug policy has to discourage um, drug addicts moving to Oregon because it's easy here. Well, yeah, very much easy. I mean, you think about it. When you think about again, we're talking about this living room situation here in the Portland metropolitan area, and the, the chair of Multnomah County, remember, it set aside eighty thousand dollars. That was a big, that was a big focus, uh, you know, kind of a deal focus because uh, she put that together eighty thousand dollars to uh, help the f f users know how to do it. I mean, yeah, that was, kind of, that was that was that was yeah. That's that's pretty heavy stuff. Well, I mean, was I that, mean, that, I, what I, about that? Was that discussed? I, 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 um, you know, so I, I think I, 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 I don't really want to, I'm going to say my perspective of what okay. I, I took from Oregon Recovers. I'm not necessarily saying this is their position, um, but uh, abstinence has to be a part of the message. Okay. You know, it's, so if you're, if you're, I mean, 
drugs are bad drugs you should not use like especially like these heart like these hard chemical based drugs drugs are bad drugs that should be part of the harm reduction policy right now um, there are a lot of uh, nonprofits that are just happy coming out giving somebody some narcan narcane and that's it and then just yeah. kind of walking yeah. away um, so I do feel like there was a, 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 a decent chunk of people that wanted to put education of abs not doing drugs you know the easiest way not to overdose on drugs is mm -hmm. not do them so that group you talk they were talking about some of those kinds of things yeah absolutely it was, a, it, was a, it was a it was very very well balanced second hand smoking did they talk about that we didn't talk about second hand and then and then the idea of sitting aside the eighty thousand dollars <laughs> i think it's my understanding it's still sitting on the table at the county yeah yeah the joint uh the joint office of housing services uh has not uh served portland uh well um and that's the from the county yeah that's so basically and the, chair, the, 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 the city chair. pays into that county office yeah and yeah then, yeah but the, uh, but the chair was pretty adamant about she was basically sponsored this whole piece um i hate to put it that way but that's the way it is i mean i'm, I'm a lay person yeah i'm dealing with the, with the masses mm -hmm. we don't like it mm -hmm. yeah. it should be repealed <laughs> Straight up, <laughs> right. <laughs> I, mean, right. I mean, it's. I mean, and then the other thing is that we're not treating the human being right too. Those individuals that are using it, mm -hmm. they need help. Yeah, we already have a homeless problem per se, and they're downtown smoking this stuff. And then, and I remember with the presentation, they were talking about the eighty thousand set aside to show people how to use it, so to speak. Yeah. And then, and then I said to myself, well, well, where is the uh, Where's the cigarette lighter? <laughs> because they were warming the stuff. I mean, it's ridiculous. It just didn't make any sense. So, was there any discussions on that piece? Um, no, no. Well, see, but see, that's, again, that's the that's the problem we're having, John. We got to get down to the meat of the matter mm -hmm. aspect of it. So, so, as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, the the public, the, the lay person, who don't who don't get engaged, if you will, my point, are being forced to get secondhand stuff. Yeah. The smoking, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the foil sitting up there with kids, and, and it's ridiculous. Well, you know, I mean, you know, my big, you know, the whole point of subsidies and government yeah. is to help grow, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, a specific industry. It's help grow, right? right? We, we, we subsidize <laughs> Intel. Yeah, right. Intel right. builds new yeah, buildings. Right, exactly. Right? We, uh, you know, like we've discussed subsidizing baseball to build mm -hmm. baseball mm -hmm. here. So, you know, that is the purpose mm -hmm. of government subsidies right. is, to, right. is to grow things. Right. And so right now um, we're subsidizing, you know, hard drug use. And there's so much negative um, that comes from that. Right, mm -hmm. and it's just like just off the top of that top of my head, um, all all the private security around town. You mm -hmm. know, we, we we've never seen this level of private security. Oh, yeah, and you know, no offense to these guys, but these right. are police academy washouts. Right, 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 you know, right, and right, so right. it's like, uh, you know, we have enough problems with dealing with the way the police right, treat us. Right, 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 right. And so now we're just you know weapon you know um, getting all these private companies mm -hmm. to act like police officers yeah, now. Yeah. So you know that's a, that's an overall negative. It's mm -hmm. a negative to the bottom line of the businesses and it's a, a, a definitely uh, you know like interactions I've just had with private security uh, a lot of just negative. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you know uh, the fear um, yeah. you know like well, people are, people yeah. don't go downtown at night anymore yeah, because yeah, like yeah. they don't want to deal with like yeah. the drug addicts right. and then like the crime right. so that they can right. pay for their right. drugs right. so it's like we're subsidizing this and it's got all this negative mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. um i know it sounds simplistic but it's like we should focus on positive things yeah right right you know and where i where i where i i, I draw a parallel from this, this is not just something i make up is like it's like el salvador yeah um, you know, two years ago, it was a murder capital of the world. Mm -hmm. And then um, the president figured out a way to, like, stop that. And everybody was, like, worried our, our economy is going to fall apart because, you know, everybody, you know, a huge part of their economy was spent on security, mm -hmm. um, you know, just all this stuff. But yeah. it was all negative stuff. Yeah. And it can be replaced with, like, positive things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for me, I w what I'd like to bring downtown um are people that are trying to start 
uh, artificial intelligence companies, mm -hmm. create incubator spaces for mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. You know, anybody that's gotten a grant for an AI project, mm -hmm. let's get them. Let's let's get them all together in a room together, create a business incubator, mm -hmm. and um, start producing. You know, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of positive momentum in that industry. A yeah. lot of momentum. It's like a gold rush in that mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. It means it means spend a little bit more time on it. I like that. No, yeah. I like that. I like your concept. Okay. So, so again, like I said, the, 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 the film on it is still on the table. Yeah, and it's then so discussed. yesterday I was at a, a, a much bigger meeting. Um, this was held by Neighbors West Northwest, okay. which is uh, a coalition of West Side neighborhood groups. Neighbor association. Neighbor associations, okay, correct. Cool. And um, there was uh, they had a Zoom call with uh, five industry experts um, okay. from business to recovery to. Um, and what district was that um, as far as the city is concerned? Uh, that would be District Four. District Four. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. The whole West Side is District Four. I don't. We do have a map. I don't know if it's uh, available, yeah, but we, we can. Yeah, we can we'll show, show that, that up probably. sometime. We're going to do that initially. Okay. Okay. Go on. Um, so uh, that one was uh, that one was hosted by uh, Eric. Uh, uh, hosted by Vadim. Vadim. Yes. Oh, okay. Remember him? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, good. Yeah. Good. And Hopefully, then, he can get back into the. I would love in, in the situation. Well, we've we've got rumors out there that he's interested in the county. Oh, okay. And so, you know, with Earl Blumenauer, that's why we led with Earl Blumenauer, is like with him retiring, um, it, it kind of shifted the, the deck around a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, like, the first domino to fall after um, uh, Earl announced his retirement mm -hmm. was uh, Shashila, who uh, Shashila. is the commissioner yeah. mm -hmm. in, in County District 2, which is North Portland. Um, she resigned from her position and announced that she's going to be running for the pl for the mm -hmm. race. She mm -hmm. was the first one to announce for that. Um, that led to her uh, having an appointed uh, a new commissioner being appointed in her position. Right, right. And right, there right. we had Jesse Beeson. He just got appointed to that position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it a lot of dominoes like have fallen, and it's all. I'll just focus on the. Uh, congressional race first and so after Shashila announced um, a city commission uh, a city commissioner from Gresham announced yeah I think it's yeah, last city name council, yeah, yeah, city, city, yeah city council yeah city council yeah last name Chavez Hispanic, little Hispanic yes. guy. okay okay so uh, he's but announced still I'm looking for those resumes right I look at these resumes and I look at the issues and I'm saying the individual should identify with the issues, mm -hmm. and I, I'm I'm really having some some issues again. I'm I'm still looking. Right, I think yeah. other people are also. Um, I think that led uh, Maxine Dexter, uh, who actually doesn't live in the district, mm -hmm. uh, but she's uh, announced that she's running for the district. Uh, she's from the West Side. The but, congressional. That's the congressional. Uh, yeah, she's person. she's yeah she's in this house, uh, the state legislature now. Okay, all right. Um, and she's gonna run for the congressional district. Earl, for over her, yes. Yeah. For Okay. Over okay, here, good. Okay. and then you know, like we've we, there, there are some other people out there that are rumored. Um, Nick Blosser's name came up okay. again oh, okay. as okay. a possible okay. person. Okay. Um, I know that a reporter asked Deborah Kafori if she was going to run, and uh, she said that she wasn't. Um, well, she she worked at that eight years at the county was a tough job. Yeah, it was very a tough, tough job. job. Yeah, tough job. Um, and then uh, Travis Nelson, who uh, is a black representative from yeah. North Portland, yeah. uh, has decided not to run for the district. Um, and, run for the district? Or excuse he, me, run for Congress. For Congress, yeah, Congress. Yeah, yeah, he's OJT, and he still got to, he got to spend a little bit more time in Northeast Portland. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, there's some issues there. I mean, yeah. I mean, when you think about district number two. Mm -hmm. Both from the county's perspective and from the city's perspective, we have lacked leadership in those areas. That's where the majority of our problems are. Mm -hmm. I'll be right in front with it. And, and and if it's not, people tend to identify it as when those problems. A lot of the problems are being shifted up in the southeast Portland area. Yeah, you got my point. Mm -hmm. Whereas one point time it was it was over here, and we got we got quite a growing society there up in, up in North Portland. Mm -hmm. Number point, and so consequently, we are definitely in, in dire need of leadership for those areas. I, I and and here's some more people running for those offices. Well, Shashila uh, seat's going to probably attract, uh, you know, some pretty decent candidates. Um, I've heard that. Uh, I, I mean, you know, Jesse Beeson has a, a natural path to the to the seat since he's the incumbent. They have concerns. You know, 
I have concerns. I, I, well, you know, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm, again, I'm looking at the resume. Right. When um, I look at the resume, I'm saying, I want some people with, with business kinds of backgrounds. That would help us. Dealing way. with people, per se. Mm -hmm. I mean, on the street, the whole nine yards. Dealing with those major issues that we're faced with. The homeless situation. The housing situation. You know, and I'm looking for resumes that, I, uh, I mean, how many houses have you built? Uh, how many houses have you managed, if you will? Uh, you know, those kinds of things. Uh, what about law enforcement? How many boards have you been sitting on? So, got, so a couple uh, of people that we've heard. I, you know, yeah. now we're getting into the speculation yeah. part of the show. <laughs> so, like, yeah. you know, this isn't gospel. Well, that's but, what they want to hear. Yeah. Um, you know, Dan Ryan's name's been Dan, bandied. Oh, really? Yeah, Dan yeah. Ryan's name's been bandied out for District Two. And who was the other one that was looking like now Dan is what's it? What's something? Dan Ryan is a city. Uh, he's elected citywide, but he's a current city commissioner. Uh, he just recently. Oh Dan, oh Dan, yeah, yeah, very interesting guy. You know, it's got just a couple of comments on that situation. You know, Dan had his own problem. I, was, I saw he he sort of put his his resume, his background uh, publicly mm -hmm. when he was sitting in the seat aspect of it. But he had problems with drugs and things of that nature and whatever. And okay, that was good. Okay, so he had so he had some background recovery and, and the homeless experience. and the homeless aspect. So you know he had some background, but then when the, when the wheel when when the when the mayor assigned him, if you will, to the whole issue of the homeless area aspect of it, kind of a deal. I thought some, some things was going to happen. Plus the fact his brother was having problems. You know, it's sad to hear that uh, he's passed away. But you know his his brother was having some problems also too. Okay, along that line. So I thought that we we've got a guy now that will fit and deal with the issue. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to OJT the job because he, had, he he himself had been a part of the piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, he left that area. He left it. Nothing happened. We got more of a problem, if you will, of where do you locate these homes? How do you get the, the communities involved? The neighborhood association? And, uh, and the guy, and he, and he speaks sort of, art, he art, he's pretty articulate, if you will. Yeah. Kind of conveyed. And people are saying this guy, say, wait a minute. I can't even out talk this guy. <laughs> I, mean, it's just, I mean, no, there's a nice, nice, nice guy. Yeah. But I was thinking he was going to focus and we were going to solve the homeless problem. The homeless problem, the human side. He had the human side. Both he and his brother was in this situation. And he had kind of gotten out of it. Some people helped him out, reached out and helped him out. His brother was still out there so to speak, and he died on the street, so to speak. It's really a sad situ situation. So I was expecting a little bit more from yeah. Dan. So now, I, I don't know I don't know where, where he's at now. He's he's doubling in other things, and, and he's, he's kind of getting into things, and he's kind of challenging some of the things that we're already doing, but it has nothing to do with, with the resume that he brought to the table when he was elected to city council. So I'm, I'm, I'm sharing this with Dan now, too. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna run, Dan, I mean, get back into the homeless business. Yeah. Because that's where he was, and the drugs, the fentanyl piece. See, he that's where that's where he came from, so to speak. So to me, he had a resume, mm -hmm. and he got out. So why don't you bring how you got out, and the folks who reached out to you. I mean, where are those folks? Yeah, I, I wonder, you I hate know. To put it that way. But yeah, you know, I know there's a lot of, you know, behind the scenes moving in the in the in City Hall, and so uh, I'm not quite sure what, um, you know, like what constraints Dan may have had in implementing his agenda. Um, well, we're gonna find out. But that's what that's why we're doing what we're let's doing. Get, yeah, let's get him. Let's get him yeah. on here. And I and I invite Dan to come on the show. I've invited him a couple of times, but you know, naturally, uh, some people don't answer their phones. <laughs> yes, that, well, so that's their problem. But we're gonna share it right here. Yeah, we got issues to deal with. Mm -hmm. The public, the neighbor, the neighbors want to know what's going on. The economics, and I'm, that's why I'm saying I like the idea of Renee running. I mean, he's he's he, if if you want to if you want to identify him as conservative, I mean, hey, he's dealing with the issues. You know, uh, he's doing with law enforcement that whole nine yards. So I'm 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 really excited about that piece. So please, if you're going to want to run for office, and we encourage you to bring your resume. If you got a resume, please bring it to the table. Absolutely. We want to get the city of Roses back. We want to get back. We want to get back on track. Yeah. We need our living room back. Yes, we do. Okay. Good. Okay. Yes, we do. I'm sorry. I, I uh, well, no, I um, and I think I, you know, I I know Vadim. Uh, has also uh, uh, put out some weather balloons on whether he wants to run for yeah. county also. Um, so that's well, he'd gotten involved in the city to begin with. Mm -hmm. You know, he was he was thinking about doing the city deal. District he, he, yeah, it was him, uh, Joanne, and Renee that were uh, in a race together. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Ren I, and Loretta was there at one time. See, and then so was, Renee was, beat. So uh, Hardesty came out. I think Renee had the second highest total 
and then yeah, he was number three. V yeah. Vadim was number three, and then so it was a runoff yeah, right, right, between right. Renee and well. And on all due respect, you know, he he didn't have a resume that that that, that uh, Renee had. Right. Vadim, no, the, the guy had, he was a businessman. Yeah, and he was a lawyer. Got my point. And he, he did a lot of work involved. during the schools and yeah, he, he was involved. He had a resume. Know, the COVID, I mean, the Vadim closures. Was, you know, I mean, I, I like his 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 aggressiveness, if you will. Mm -hmm. But you know, you got to kind of get there in the community and and do some things, if you will. He's the head of a Goose Hollow Neighborhood Association, so I, I think I'm he has taken your area. advice. But then, but like I said, you know, Bud Clark was there in the Goose. You know, yes. And I don't know how well he knew Bud, Bud but I knew Bud yeah. in the city, and the, and, and the city knew Bud. And Bud was an asset to the mm -hmm. city, and he contributed quite a bit. You know what I'm saying? He had a resume. He had a restaurant. He had the kids involved in the deal, and he was very much involved. And you know, whoop whoop. I mean, he was he was a, he was a, he was the guy. Yes, he was. You know what I'm saying. So so that that'd be a good good way of then saying telling to whoever wants to run. That's right there. Sure, you might you might be well educated. But we're not looking for just a well-educated person. We we're looking for people with, with a resume. And, and, the and they can do the retail the, politics. Yeah, right. What about the Neighborhood Association? That, that's, a, that's a solid group, if you will. Mm -hmm. And we got them in every area in the city. We still have them, yeah. thank God. Yeah. You got my point? Yeah. So show, show, that, show, show some things like that on your resume. That if, you, if you've been involved with those folks, you've been active. Yeah. You yeah. I mean? So, so Redeem, hey, uh, if not that, come on to the show and let us know what you've been doing. Since you since you ran ran before, yeah, okay, yeah, and um, so that kind of covers my speculation on the county level, right? Um, the city th this morning actually, uh, so on the new city council race, um, we had a new announcement this morning. Oh, really? Yeah. Who was it? Uh, Steve Novak. Steve Novak. Oh, Steve. Yes. Former city commissioner. Well, he, he had a resume. He just announced his campaign. Great website. I just took oh, yeah. a look at look at his oh, new yeah, website. Steve, Steve's good looking website. Yeah. He's, he. Hey. He's disabled. You know what I mean. But the guy's a very active guy. Very smart guy. guy. Harvard. Smart Harvard guy. educated. Oh yeah, yeah. But but my point is, the guy is, he's active. You know, he's active. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate they got him on the street stuff. You know, back when he when he was running against. Yeah. Uh, uh, and she was no, Udale, respect, right? Yeah, yeah and, and she and uh, what's, what's her name? What's her name? Hardesty. Uh, no, the one. No, she was running against uh, Chloe. Chloe. Yeah, she, she Chloe. And Chloe was she was working very active with with active neighbor associated with reference to housing mm -hmm. and renting and whatever. See, so see, she kind of had the upper hand. But really, Steve, Steve really had a. He, he was really there. He was in transportation. Mm -hmm. That's where his. his but the, he was very active when he was sitting in that seat. And and I'll tell you, a guy who who's kind of a disabled. He's a he's a very active disabled kind of a guy. Yeah, the guy is physically. I mean, he's he's there, so he's going to be he's he really really welcome him running. He's going to be a real uh, he's going to be a real tough one. Um, that's district number. That's district number three, the number one we three. call the Kremlin. That's yeah, going to yeah. be out in southeast uh, uh, Portland. Oh, yeah. well, that's a tough one. So he'd be he'd so be, he'd be ideal for that area. You, you know, he's he would be do really good. Um, who who else? That that's going to be an interesting race. So the the biggest fundraiser uh, so far in the city council race is Angelita Murillo. Murillo. Uh, Murillo. Murillo. Oh, I don't know. Um, she uh, she used to work in Hardesty's office. Um, I believe what I what I was told is uh, her campaign is mostly being uh, uh, communicated on Instagram and TikTok, and she's been able to use that really good as that a, social media. Yeah, uh, you gotta watch that. Deal, that kind of she's been able to use that as, yeah, to yeah, to yeah, take yeah. the fundraising lead citywide. So mm. very impressive stuff. No, uh, that's gonna be a tough one to do. And then to do. Uh, Robin Yee is also out there. Robin Yee, yes, um, and uh, he he's raised over twenty thousand dollars. Um, and uh, he's great. he's built a, a formidable treasure great, trust. Great. So, and then um, you have Jesse Cornett. And Jesse, yeah, um, Jesse. I know Jesse Cornett from uh, the Bus Project. Yeah, okay. uh, we were sitting down in one of my very in, in my office, yep, formulating the oh, idea yeah, about yeah. buying the bus. Oh, Jefferson sure? Smith got us oh, all yeah, together Jeff, for yep, that. Yep. Um, oh, is he going to get in? You think? Oh, he's already. Jeff, he's Jeff, already. Jeff, oh, Jeff oh, I don't know about Jefferson. I haven't yeah, heard anything Jeff, about Jeff, him. Yeah, he's ready to go again. He ought to do the mayor thing. It would be a fun deal. That would be interesting. It'd be a fun deal. You know, he does. He, Jeff, hey, he, Smith uh, knew, knew his dad real well. Oh yeah, his, his dad was very active. Yeah, yeah. And you know, but him, he Meredith. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, good. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm liking that. Now, they, what, what else? Who else do we have? Uh, so yeah, there's going to be a lot of fireworks over in uh in 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 District Three. I just okay. read a rumor. Uh, that former Metro Commissioner Rex Burkholder. Oh, okay. Oh, is okay. looking into jumping into oh. either he. Ha Let me see if it's. Yeah, Rex. Yeah, gee, really. Gee, we're getting. 
Yeah, I, I don't think it's official. It's just a rumor right now. But yeah. Um, Oh, this is good. this is getting good now. I mean, yeah, it's getting it's getting real good over it's here. Turn over the saw. They got the shovels now. People coming out. <laughs> oh wow! Oh yeah, they might have a living room here. Yeah. So, uh, oh, so he has actually uh, Rex Burkholder has declared. He has. Okay. In good. District Three. That's good. That's good. So I mean, to me, not in any particular order. Uh, my favorites in the district are uh, Steve Novak, yeah, no, Rex yeah, Burkholder, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, Jesse Cornett, yeah, yeah. and then you cannot sleep on uh, the money that Miss Mario has raised. Mm. Um, so I would, I would. It's going to be more than money though now. You know, we, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're well, looking for the resumes. It's a small district, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It, See, you know, voter money, connection It's will, not just going to be money that's going to win this. you got to have a resume. Got to take I it seriously. And I hope, and I, by the way, I, I back in my other days, I, 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 I learned that that should be part of the application process. The resume should be a part of the application. Like it's not just, not just your name and your phone number. Right. No. Uh -uh. The resume should be a part of that. I like that. And discussed yeah. and available, if you will, to the public. I like okay? that. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, so District 3 is going to just shaping up to be a big battlefield. Yeah. Uh, District 1, uh, which is east of 205, right. that's shaping up to be a battlefield really? also. Uh, to, uh, Who are some of the key people that are running? Well, uh, let's see. It, it is. Um, I think two of the top ten, at least oh, two of the go. top. There's your map. We got our map. Okay, yes, here we go. There we go. Awesome. Awesome. Yes, so, uh, Thanks, Vo. Yeah. Appreciate that. So you'll see there, uh, map three is what we were just talking right. about right. with uh, Rex Burkholder, uh, Steve Novak, Jesse Cornett, and mm -hmm. uh, Angelita uh, Murillo. Um, so that's going to be District 3 right there in the middle of your map. We are calling that. Mm -hmm, uh, the Kremlin mm -hmm, mm -hmm, informally mm -hmm. um, and then uh, District 1 is shaping up to be a big battle also mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I think uh, two things about District 1 just you know in a geography sense it is uh, all of Portland east of 205 okay okay that's it's district one over there where is it district one is the blue Three, one two, the blue the blue yeah okay, so it's gonna blue. be all east of 205 okay but it also has the airport I mean, the airport is part of that. Yeah, that would be interesting to transfer. Yeah, I mean that's that's one of our most important pieces of yes. infrastructure oh, okay. in the entire city. It's okay. one of the things that we're famous for. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the positives about Oregon. Yes, yes. Um, we're 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 getting that new wood uh, roof installed yeah, exactly. right now. Yes, yes, yes. So. Uh, you know, to me as a native, um, the, I've always been really proud of our airport yeah, and the yeah, way that and it's, the view is beautiful. It, yeah. You can't beat that. Yeah. yeah. Beauty, beauty. Um, and so there we also have uh, two really big fundraisers. Um, uh, Stephanie Rouse. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a Park Rose native. Mm -hmm. um, she's raised a little bit over twenty six thousand um, dollars. She's been very aggressive uh, on the campaign trail, just aggressive in getting okay. herself out okay. there. OK. Um, meaning that I see her all over the place. Right. 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 Um, and uh, the other guy over there that uh, has raised a significant sum of money is uh, uh, Timur Indoor. Mm -hmm. uh, he comes from the transportation circles. Mm -hmm. I think uh, loosely he's um, friends with Steve Novick. Mm -hmm. um, so he's, he's raised a, a significant mm -hmm. amount of money. Um, other people in that district are Candace Avalos. Okay. Uh, she um, helped... Uh, push this new form of government, the Charter Commission, through. Okay. okay. Um, was she part of that committee? Yes. Oh, she was. Yeah, she sat on it. Okay, she sat on the committee. Yes. It would be nice to have one of these people just kind of get a get an update. I mean, you're you're already talking to most of those people anyway. I I try to. Good. Yeah, good I try good, to. Kind of get a sense of because I think they, they're, they're still organizing. Mm -hmm. They're still organizing. So we're going to reach that at hundred at hundred mark of, of of people participating and so. running for the really. I think wow. we'll get there. Well, we got we had some new uh, new candidates uh, declare, but I'll, I'll before I get to that. Um, so and then uh, other candidates I like uh, in District One, uh, Terrence Shaw mm -hmm. uh, has. Oh, a, here, here we go. We got the district. Yep, yeah. the, district One again. Uh, Terrence one. Shaw has a very compelling story. Um, He's in one. Yes. Okay. He's black. Um, he has. Uh, what's, his, what's his background? Well, he was actually incarcerated. Incarcerated. Okay. Yeah. Cool. 
and so uh, he brings he, he, he can, he can bring he, that piece. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. Um, Not and, the interviewing. And so uh, give us a call, can't Terrence. And then for the last couple of years, he's been um, uh, building living wage jobs, primarily with black males doing uh, graffiti removal. Oh, really? Yeah, that's that's huge. Yeah, that's huge. That's that's a fun piece. In fact, I'll throw, I'll give him a I'll give him a little a little piece for his resume if, if he's interested. And that is, he could visit the uh, the, the the haulers. You know, like waste management, folks like that, uh, that are basically picking up our garbage, if you will. Yeah. And when you think about those guys, I used to work for waste management, USA Waste. Mm -hmm. And the first person that's out in the morning picking up the garbage are the haulers. Yeah. You got me? Yeah. And, and, and I had recommended some time ago that uh, what we could do, we could approach these those individuals and work a deal out with the haulers because they pick up the garbage, mm -hmm. so to speak. And they could take photos. Yeah, uh, especially the folks doing the graffiti because they doing it. They have to do daylight in this right, case, right, right. and uh, do it that way. Send it back down to the dispatcher. You got me, mm -hmm. and then in turn send it to nine one one, right? Yeah, and, and get these guy, these folks, right? Yeah, and in all due respect, and then the, the guys that they catch, as far as I'm concerned, work a deal out with the arts commission, mm -hmm. and maybe find an area where they can do something on wall. Yeah, do some murals, but they also would clean. I like they it. would also would clean the public uh, service the, the component. Public service component. Yeah. You know, put a uniform on a an orange or whatever something like that. <laughs> well, you know, orange is a little bit too prison. No, no, that, but that's the whole idea. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, no, no, not no prison. I just want you to be recognized. If you're going to be an artist, I mean, you got to have a uniform anyway. But my point is that my point is that they would do uh, pink. Yeah, it would do pink. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go the whole show and show about you know, oranges and new black and all I'm that. I'm gonna put my recruiting uniform on. <laughs> <laughs> Get these guys square to square away. But anyway, but the bottom line is that, that, that my point is that some creativity. Yeah. And I, I'd love to be able to talk to, to this, this gentleman if he's interested yeah. in doing that because a lot of that graffiti happens in District Number Two. Big time. And I, I, I do think there are uh, other for you know, uh, other, I think the, Candidates that have name recognition haven't been jumping right, into right, the race right. so think, early. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, because like yeah, they, yeah. the pioneers no, no, no. always get all the oh, arrows. Yeah, 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 you know yeah, yeah. what I mean? And there's, there's not going to so, be a primary, right? There's going to be no primary aspect of it. So, so they got time. I know that um, I have heard people trying to uh, recruit Loretta Smith out there. Loretta, yep, Loretta, yep. yep. I, I've, I've heard right. people try to recruit her. I, I think she's sitting in a very neat position. I mean, she's she's got an acquaintance. She's got people have voted got, for her out there. The senator, senator, she got the senator. She's, people the have key. voted for her. Out senator's there. the key. In fact, since we made that point, who's who's Earl going to do? Going to support? Oh boy, I think it's a little early for that. Oh, that's gonna you be know, let's, 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 let's get Earl back home. Let, and let me get him, get him, get him here. Yeah, get him here. And you know, by the way, since we weren't that point, uh, pull, pull out your the, the old voters pamphlets. You know that uh, that that we normally get the, the voters get. That's a, that's something that people really identify with aspect of it. But I would suggest to those folks who might be interested in running for office, pull those old ones out, and you can see some of these people that we're talking about, mm -hmm. and look at their resume. Yeah, you see what I mean. And that's what you got to bring to the table. You know, it's not just the money nowadays. Now, right, right in front of you, we want active folks. Mm -hmm. And you can rest assured that if you're running for city council and you're one of those three people that get elected, it, it's the fight. Now, you've got a job. Yeah. Because you guys have to organize. That's when the fight starts. The, that the three people in those, that particular district has to work together. Yes. And you got to bring the issue to the mayor yeah. and the and the, and the uh, city manager. That so that'll, that'll be the interesting part about the race. I think um, as a, the the race evolves, yeah. you're going to see slates right, uh, right. start develop. Exactly, exactly. And uh, they could come from anywhere. You know, right. they could come from labor. Right. They could come from business. Right. They could come from somebody running for mayor. Right, right. You know, um, so I this will be very interesting and very new. Right, right, uh, right, right. You know, for Portland. Right, 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 right. And then uh, moving over into District uh, 2, where we're at right now, which right. is North Portland, uh, we have the most uh, candidates uh, mm -hmm. in that race. Um, unfortunately, I don't. This this is the area I grew up. Well, in. I live in that area. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. I don't. I don't know. The only one I've have, uh, that that's reached out to meet me uh, has been uh, Joseph Emerson. Mm. And uh, he's new to it. Uh, he just moved to Portland in 2014. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and uh, 
what I I just had coffee with him on Wednesday, mm-hmm. and he's really trying to bring um, get community involved. Yeah, well, uh, he believes in bringing getting community. He's going to really have to get community. I live there. Okay, <laughs> so, so <laughs> he's going to give you a call. Well, he's get on this table. Okay, here. I'll, I'll put him. I put him. I put a little list of people yeah, that he yeah, should yeah. talk to over yeah, in Northeast. Yeah. And well, just uh, Oregon Voters Digest. No problem. Okay, we will we'll give him all, all fifteen minutes or so. Okay. Got me. Be better than three minutes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Got me. Yeah. You can go to the city and to the county. They'll give you three minutes, but that, that's really not enough time to mm-hmm. really talk about anything. Yeah. Which is another thing. I, if I were to run, I'm throwing, giving some hints, if you will. If you're going to run for office aspect of it, maybe see if you can get the get policy change mm-hmm. as far as as far as the public going and communicating to those elected. Uh, employees, right, right, yes, you know I mean? yes. And they should need more than three minutes. It should be six minutes, and give them six minutes. And at the same time, have a staff person to talk to these people afterwards to make sure that that uh, they get the answers to their questions yeah. and concerns, right. and bring them up the next time around. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? As far as as far as the city council, because most of them they don't have the background. Yeah, and you know, and and just in going back to that uh, measure one hundred and ten uh, yeah. meeting, that was one of the criticisms that came out of it was yeah. that like the community members spent all this time creating all these questions, right. forty questions, none of them got, got got asked. No, because guess what? They didn't care. The folks who were elected, <laughs> they didn't care. They don't have the background. They didn't care. And they're concerned about being reelected. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, making mistakes, but and in fact, uh, that's that's an interesting piece. That's why the city is doing their own Zoom every day. And the reason why they're getting so many problems because they don't answer the questions aspect of it, mm-hmm. and and so consequently, uh, they need to answer. Them. Just don't sit down there and have a person go through all these changes, the traffic that we have to go through to go to city council meetings parking. and parking, all that stuff, and the crime, all kinds of stuff, if you will. It's ridiculous. I mean, if you're going to give them three minutes, you really need to have somebody communicate with them after they get through. Yeah. And then they only, and, and, and with the way the city does, they tell you to basically identify specifically what you want to say. Right. What you want to talk about. Right. So they pick and choose. Yeah. You got my point? That is. And so, and for the poor, for the other guy over here, uh, and, I, and I'm, I'm familiar with a number of the folks that get up there, aspect of it, if, if that's the only way I, you can learn, you can learn more about the county because I know the I know the guys, you know, mm-hmm. uh, pissed off. There's a guy named Pissed Off there. That I know him real good. He changed <laughs> his name. I mean, you got you got uh, uh, you got Charles over there, and you got uh, Outlaw, and those guys are very articulate, mm-hmm. and they they do their work, homework. Yeah, and you can learn something. And you would think that's what the elected officials. That's what you're paying the elected officials to you do. You want them to do that. You understand what I'm saying? Yep. So they don't say nothing. Because they really would get in trouble if they're if trying to respond to those folks. And the city council, just a little opposite. They do that. They tell you, you have, you know, you have to identify specifically what you're going to talk about. Yeah. That gives them time. Right. To do some research. Or put you at the end of the list. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, my boy. See? And then the rest of the folks are nervous, you know, because a lot of folks, seniors, for instance, have issues and whatever, or other people. And, you know, they're not as articulate. Mm-hmm. They're not graduates. They're homeowners. They're voters. They're taxpayers, and they need to be involved. So we need to, we need to look at that. We need to look at that. Grassroots. Look, we got about another minute or so, and okay. what, we, what I'm thinking about, we're going to go to we're going to continue on our next show. Okay. Uh, what, what we what we left off here. All right, we'll pick it up and talk about District Four over the on the District west 4, side. Right, District Four. We got, we got some uh, new uh, candidates there, and um, I also want to point you guys out. Yeah. I'm doing a survey this month. Good. Um, uh, about issues for Portland, so please, it's it's anonymous. Good. Um, scan the QR code. Um, it will pull up the survey. Um, if you if you want to. Um, leave your email address to be to get the results sent to you um that can be done and a quickie how do you do that so you just hold this yeah just hold this up to your phone and then a little yellow box will pop up Good. push that yellow box and it'll lead right to the survey um completely anonymous we've got about 195 responses really yeah and what were some of the, just quickly, some of the questions? Uh, uh, right off the, the first question is, um, is Portland on the wrong track or the right track? Okay. And um, last time I looked, it was about 85% of people were saying that it was on the wrong track. And you got about, what, about four or five more, more questions on that? Oh, I've got about, uh, probably about 12 to 15. It's about a five-minute survey. Tell, tell you what we'll do. We'll close this show, and, and when we come on this next time around, we'll, 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 we'll start off with that. Okay. 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 That's cool with you. Yeah. Well, good. This has been great. A lot of time. Right, Bruce. Thank Appreciate you. that. This is really Appreciate great. You. All right. Enjoy. Hey, 
Again, happy holidays to you. See you next week. Take care. Bye.